This episode of the Fight Within podcast is presented to you by Meguiar's. For over 115 years, Meguiar's has been carefully creating and producing advanced formulas with cutting-edge chemistry to deliver a show car perfect appearance. Whether you're showing on the fairway, finalizing your car for auction, or simply getting your beloved car ready for a weekend drive, Meguiar's is ready to help with their premium car care products to make every automotive surface look its absolute best. Meguiar's, reflect your passion. Make sure to visit them at meguiar's.com. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Fight Within podcast. Today's guest is Luis Soto. He's a serial entrepreneur and one of Benjamin's friends. <laughs> so we, uh, we, we, we're talking a little bit off air, and you have a really cool story. And, and you know, for, well, first of all, thank you so much for coming on and, and for yeah, being thank here. Thank you, guys, for um, having me. And, and so, you know, everyone defines success different. And, and so I give us a little bit of a backstory or background as to how you grew up, where you came from and kind of what, what led you to where you are now. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. And, um, yeah, started off, uh, born and raised in San Diego, um, family of, uh, uh, three siblings, uh, single mother, which is, I think my biggest driving point, uh, seeing my mom struggle, uh, seeing her, uh, hard work um she worked for ucsd as a custodian okay so she you know put in the work you know didn't give up um didn't get any uh help for the government like most people would um so that really taught me that anything is possible as far as, far as uh you know really putting in the work and just being a hard-working person that's awesome what how, how what like what do you attribute that to though is it culture is it the way she grew up and the things that she passed down to you yeah just a drive i think that uh with seeing people struggle you understand that anything is possible as long as you put in the work right so for example when i was about 12 years old um you know she couldn't afford to buy a shoes or pants and things like that so i had friends that um started selling candies uh door to door Mm-hmm. And um, I joined that group. And, you know, after a while, I had the nice shoes. I had the nice pants because I was able to buy myself certain things. Um, so that taught me that you can't be afraid to go knock on the door and ask for certain things or sell. Yeah. So that actually goes a long ways. And that, I think, helped me uh, throughout my years that it doesn't hurt to ask, um, you know, and you just keep going. Just keep working hard. Did you Did you have that? like value taught at home or was that something that was learned because i think a lot of kids now you know they they with social media and and we talk about it a lot but they don't they don't see the value in a dollar because they didn't earn it they had they could post something and then make some money definitely came from within right I, i think that i've always appreciated um people's success but I've always wanted to learn how they got there Mm -hmm. and what steps did they take because, you know, everybody has a different path, but um, I've always liked to ask questions when it's, when I've met successful people and, uh, and everybody has a different path, but it all comes down to hard work and not being afraid. Mm -hmm. Uh, And overall, just being a good person. I think that goes a long ways with uh, your relationships and how you meet people and and work uh you know uh, with other people as well so again it just goes a long ways so where where did you get where'd you get started say throughout your childhood yeah. you know you say you were born and raised in san diego yeah. so i was lucky enough to go to a carpenter apprenticeship program for about eight months and that's uh, right out of high school and that's what kind of led me to understanding construction uh became a framer uh and uh Right out of that school, I was able to work for a company called Design Studio West in La Jolla, which they kind of catered to a higher end construction. Yeah, I feel like I've seen those signs like in downtown La Jolla area. Yeah, like where the bird rock and all that. Exactly, stuff is. exactly. So they really taught me how to do uh, construction, but on a higher uh, level, you know, just the prep work to do the work in somebody's house. You, we're talking million dollar homes yeah. was longer than the actual work sometimes itself. So. It showed um, how to be clean, uh, respect, clean cut, no smoking, no radios. It's a whole different type of construction. And that really made me understand that it, you know, quality goes a long ways Mm -hmm. for sure. Dang. I didn't know that. Yeah. um, 
So after you you started as a framer. Yes. That's yeah. kind of crazy for people that don't know construction to see like where you're at now starting as a framer. That's yeah. kind of I think the framing uh, kind of helps you understand the whole building footprint. Uh, you understand a little bit of the electrical, the plumbing, the mechanical, but in general, it kind of makes you understand the whole building footprint. So it does help. Yeah. Yeah, because I would not know. I mean, from construction like perspective, that's how we met, obviously. Yeah. But going from framing to everything that I've seen you do and stuff that you've even done for us over the years is yeah. like you said it gives you the understanding but how long did you work as a framer it was probably about four years um, but because of my work ethic I, I got promoted really quickly into management and supervision so you know i was supervising guys that were like 20 years older than me and yeah. i was like 24 years old so it was a little bit of pushback you know but i wasn't afraid of the challenge and that made me understand that you know uh knowing how to talk to people and and uh understanding where they're coming from and everybody works different um again knowing how to manage people goes a long way yeah yeah so i mean kind of walk us through for for people that are listening that might be in a position where maybe they have a skill that they're good at <clears throat> right but they've they've always been doing it for someone else or they're too afraid to make that step to do it on their own or they don't know how we were just talking about right before we started how everyone sees you as like the successful guy that you are now they don't see like your childhood like you were describing yeah. they didn't see that you know you came from a single mom that didn't have the ability to provide the things that you wanted she provided yeah. the things that you needed yeah. but not wanted there's a there's a difference there but um you know they only see and we say it every time but i have to keep going back to it they only see like the fighters under the lights right they don't see the prep work yeah so Walk us through how you got from Framer to literally you freaking dominate the construction market down here. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very cool. So what, one of the driving points was having kids. You know, I met my wife at 17 years old out of high school. Uh, we've been together ever since. Uh, we had kids of around 22 years old. So once you have kids, it kind of changes the way you think, right? Once you have to feed somebody else, uh, it changes things. But um, yeah, with, with construction, there's just so many moving parts, so much to learn. But at the end of the day, um, you have to do things right. Mm -hmm. With contracting, there's, there's um, a lot of different ways to look at it. Um, I'll, I'll go back a little bit to when I got, uh, when I went on my own. Um, you know, you want the stable job, you want security. Um, so I would work, I worked for about two years doing side jobs until I was able to go on my own. And that's, a lot of contractors kind of go through that phase mm -hmm. who were, they want the security, they want the the the, the, the paycheck every two weeks. Yeah. But I, I, you know, with my skill set, I was able to get little side jobs and, and, and kind of start learning how to really talk to people, how to maximize uh, uh, my ability. And, uh, you know, we, you know, it was a lot of late nights, a lot of late nights, a lot of hard work. Um, but I started investing a lot in myself with uh, tools and trucks and uh, and not being afraid of, of working without a license, which is a really big thing um, for that period of time. You know, if you get caught working without a license, you won't even be able to get a license. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of things that, you know, I was able to do. Uh, but when I started my business uh, officially at 26 years old with the license, um, there was no looking back. I just kept pushing and making a lot of great contacts and, and uh, treating every project like if it was my own property. And I think that mindset get, you know, helped me really fine tune every single project. Dang. So how many employees are you at right now? About 24. 24. Yeah. And that was, that's scaled back for you, right? It is scaled back because of COVID. You know, it has been hard getting uh, employees and, uh, but business has been there. Yeah. yeah. So that's, Going from, I, I like that you said that when you have kids, everything changes. Everything changes, yeah. Because it's it's one of those things too where, I mean, I had kids a little a little bit later. Um, I wanted to be younger when we had our first kid, but I was thirty already. But even still, you know, having your first thirty years of life and going through whatever you've gone through, yeah. the second you have that kid, it's like, oh crap, I need to like, I'm thirty years old and I look <laughs> like I have everything put together. But when we brought our daughter home, I was like, I got to get my stuff together, like now. Um, 
So yeah. it's funny you said that. Yeah, yeah. There's no looking back. You know, the going on your own with uh, business, it's always hard. You know, uh, we went through a couple of rough months uh, with uh, our business because um, people wouldn't pay or they had things delayed or they got a loan and they wouldn't go through. So, you know, once you hit those low points and, and really struggle, makes you appreciate every other milestone and everything else. But at the end of the day, you have to invest in yourself uh, uh, mentally, physically, and, and uh, with work, you have to, um, you know, be honest. I, I think that's like the biggest thing I would recommend people is just to be honest uh, with people. Uh, communication goes a long ways as well. Mm -hmm. I tell all my guys, if there's anything you need, any thoughts, just let me know. Uh, let's be on the same page because uh, that's how things uh, kind of go a different direction if you don't have the right communication. Yeah. There's a, a point, I think, that people, like especially in business, happen to, to cross where you know, you know that everything you've done was for like the right reason, but then there's like that, that point I'm talking about, which you've, I, I know you have it, I, and the way I'm trying to describe it, it's not making sense right now because my brain's not working. But that point when you know, dang, I'm going to be good. I'm going to make it. I'm going to have the things I want. Um, like, when did you have that reality for yourself? Because I think, again, like referring back to social media and today's culture, we live in a, a culture and a, a time now where everyone wants it right now, right? Like, they're going to wake up today and be like, I need to be a millionaire. And then they expect it, you know, in, in a, the next short time period. Yeah. No, everything takes time. Uh, I think that's that's the biggest thing is uh, you have to put in the time. Um, and then construction, a lot of people think that because I'm going to become a framer or a drywaller, I'm going to make more than your average job. And then they start bouncing around trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to, what's going to make me the most money. I always tell the, the younger generation that, stick to it you know if you put in you know five years of being a framer then you're going to be a little bit more skilled then you can mm -hmm. kind of step you know into those shoes but everybody wants it too quickly i've always been a person that set goals for myself uh for example when i hit 30 even though my business was already doing well i hit i, I put myself a 15 year goal from 30 to 45 work as hard as possible really start investing um, and and working to where maybe when I was 45, maybe I can step back. I'm 40 years old now, so I got five years to go. Yeah. So it, it's just been goals and, and milestones and things like that to be able to uh, look forward to something in the future. And do you share that with with your wife or business partners? Like, how how do you how do you hold yourself accountable to those things? Because it's great to have goals, but sometimes it's yeah. hard to to hold yourself accountable because yeah. you're in an office by yourself or the, you're out the work on the ethic field. i think by working monday through sunday uh -huh. you know you you have to put in the time uh, i've always uh, been one of those people that wake up at five in the morning every day uh and and go out there and work as hard as possible uh, my wife has been extremely supportive um, you know, currently she's uh, very close to getting a real estate license okay. uh, which is also going to be really beneficial to her to kind of find her own way mm -hmm. um, uh, with uh, building and construction. Uh, lately, we have been doing a lot of apartments, for example, uh, in the downtown area. We've probably done about 100 doors. Dang. Um, so things have changed quite a bit uh, in, in downtown Santa Ana. And because we've been doing so much construction, um, it kind of came into my mind that I should also tap into the management maintenance uh, business. Mm -hmm because we do these properties, we provide full warranties and we're always getting called to do certain things mm -hmm. or fix uh, certain items. But uh, because of that, I, I manage about 40 to 50 doors currently. And we're trying to expand on that side of the business, which it's tapped into the, the construction business, but at the same time, it's this whole other yeah. thing. So that's keeping us busy as well. Dang. That's nuts. What? What do you attribute, and I know we're going a little backwards, but what do you attribute that work ethic from? Is it just from seeing what your mom went through, or is it something that was learned later on? I think it's just been my goal in life to, to provide, uh, you know, for my family, something mm -hmm. stable, insecurity. 
um, you know, when, when you're young and, and it's a single mother, you move around a lot, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, she's trying to make ends meet. So she, I've always wanted something stable for my kids to where they know they can come home. There's going to be food on the plate, uh, uh, you know, hot water, everything set up for them for success, mm-hmm. right? Um, there's one saying that we've, I think we've probably all said that we want to give our kids everything we didn't have. Mm-hmm. But that's the wrong way to look at it. You want to say, I want to give my kids all the knowledge that I didn't have to set them up for, for the future, right? Yeah. And that comes with, you know, financial, with business, with, with relationships, uh, with self-respect, everything that comes together for them, you know, to set them up to be successful. Yeah. How do you, okay, going to like the parent thing, this is shifting a little, but yeah. with <laughs> wanting to set them up with success, how do you draw that line, at least for yourself? Like for me, I know what, what I'm going to yeah. do, but how do you draw the line from giving them the things that you know that you didn't get to have or just because you have the the financial ability to <clears> give them? How do you give them things but still make sure you're making them have the, the ethic that you got, the work ethic? It's a team effort, right? So for example, at my house, we have a pool. Um, my son's a pool guy. Okay. He's the landscaper. He feeds the dogs, he cleans after them. So it's part of a team. We all have to contribute to make this household work. Um, you know, he's a junior in high school right now, has, he's doing really great, uh, just got his driver's permit. So already wants a car, but I want him to earn that. Yeah. You know, we can't just give him everything. Uh-huh. And I think he, he sees the hard work. Um, so as my daughter, she's, she's 18, um, but we have to make him understand that everything costs uh, money or, yeah. or or time or effort just to get there. Um, yeah. yeah, that's always a, a a big one for me, especially when you you meet people that grew up with nothing and then yeah. have you know the ability to buy whatever they want. You know, yeah. it's it's always interesting how the kids turn out because it's mm-hmm. like I know for myself personally, I will never like give my kids like handouts. I mean, I'm not saying I'm gonna like no, you can't have a new pair of shoes. I'm I'm saying it in a yeah. way of like. I'm gonna, I want them to earn it and have some form of understanding of like what it took to earn that. You know, like you said, yeah. your, your son's like your pool boy and the landscaper and stuff like that. I wanna instill in my kids, well, hey, if you want this $500 bike, I would love to buy you that $500 bike, but you need to know a little bit of what it means to earn it. So whether it's, I don't know, chore, like, I don't, whatever. Yeah, that's know. awesome though to have, every, like that's what I told my son. I didn't, not in those words, but I go, you, because he's a sophomore in high school and I go you are a part of this family yeah right and as a part of this family you have to contribute to to our daily living situation whether it's helping your mom or me with the dishes you know vacuuming cleaning the room taking the trash out whatever it is you're a part of this family I I wish I had it a little bit more organized where it was like on certain days you know this is you know that this is your responsibility uh, because I have a 10 year old and a five year old and, and what I really want to tap into that I just started looking into because I wasn't taught it is financial literacy. There's not a lot of minorities, if you were, or, or households in general that, that are financially literate. They don't understand money, the way it works, the banking system, you know, all, all those type of things. Is that something that you're pouring on to your kids and, and well, kind of teaching them? Definitely. Um, <clears throat> with investing and You know, I was lucky enough to partner with uh, Dana Harvey on a property here in Santa Ana. And that has uh, been great, great partnership. And we've been able to understand how to maximize value on a property. And we do that on on all of our projects as well. But I've been really explaining to to my son that um, to get to these positions, we've had I've had to work so hard to Mm -hmm. build relationships, to work hard to people to trust me, right? That's mm-hmm. a very big thing with me is trust and, and honesty to get to these positions, right? A lot of people will say, well, it's luck, it, you know, some sort of it, uh, some form of luck, but it's all that hard work and, and connecting with people mm-hmm. has been a really good thing for me to, to connect with good guys like Dana, um, um, you know, to maximize uh, relationships. And um, at the end of the day, um, um, we want to be able to invest, right? With investing, uh, you know, you want that security long term, the passive income. I think it's what we all want at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Well, I think a lot of people in sports, at least, they they say that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. 
So you you earned that. You worked, you know, to in order to have that opportunity, you had to work your butt off to get that. And, and the other thing, especially doing the podcast that I've noticed is working with someone is is less stressful. You know, have have you had that same experience partnering with Dana or, or other people that you might be involved with? No, I, I think understanding people and, and it, we'll go back to communication, right? Yeah. If you're really um, honest and, and have that trust with that person, you're going to tell them exactly what you think or what should the call should be. And that's how it should be. Right? A lot of people tend to hold things back or 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 not be straight up sometimes. Yeah. And that causes uh, affliction or, com- or yeah. conflict. Sorry. And, uh, you know, you just have to be straight up. And, and I think that's the reason... Um, that I've been able to connect with a lot of these guys. Um, most of my really good friends, you know, including Ben, they've been my clients. That's how I start those relationships. Yeah. As a contractor, it's very hard to do that and then become friends, right? Yeah. To be a client and then become friends mm. because with contracting, there's so many moving parts that can go that can go wrong, right? Uh, I'll give you guys an example. Um, as a contractor, to get a job, that's very hard, right? To get a job and finish it, that's a whole nother story. To get a job, finish it uh, with a happy customer, that's like three different steps. Yeah. To get a job, um, finish it, happy customer, and then make a profit. These are all different <laughs> levels of, of understanding business, right? Yeah. Anybody can start it, not everybody can finish it, right? Yeah. Um, so you have to look at all that, all those different steps to understand business. You know, you have to follow through. Um, and uh, a lot of mistake that younger uh, contractors like when I did when I was starting out is you were underbid a job thinking you can try to get it for that much and then you would lose you know your ass on it because you didn't really figure everything out yeah and I always stood and and finished the job I never once walked away which is the easy thing to do especially if you're you underbid and you're like yeah. now costing yourself money to do yeah. the job. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make when they're young or they'll say, well, somebody else is charging me less. You want to match that? And then you match it and you, you know, yeah. it, it doesn't work that way. I say yeah. playing the game to get ahead, especially yeah. like, you know, you said at the beginning, you told me you, everyone has to play the game at the beginning, unless yeah. you've been really lucky <clears throat> or you started with a huge handout at yeah. the beginning. But I think yeah. playing the game in business is something that, also, you know, for people that that haven't done it, dude, I played the. We've I've known you for what five five years now or yeah. so, 20, 6, 15, 16, yeah. right around there. And even since that time to now, I feel like is I'm finally just now in my own business, like hitting a different level that we didn't have before. But you know, the outside looking in, when I first met you, we were we were opening all these stores, we were opening a restaurant outside looking in is like oh those guys have it made but they didn't know oh you know maybe they don't people just don't think about what it took to get there they didn't realize that i wasn't maybe taking a paycheck ever and was barely able to pay my own bills you know they just saw oh they got four stores a restaurant all this stuff they didn't see that i was working seven days a week to cut down on our payroll or washing dishes at the restaurant like all those little things do you think do you think people really care no, because they want they want the immediate success that we've talked about, you know, and and that's why I love hearing stories like yours, man, of like you came from nothing. Right. You came from what you what your your mom had the ability to give you right to now you're in a position where you can give back to your family, your friends, your community, whatever you choose to. But that journey of getting from nothing to the quote unquote American dream like and everything in between that is what gets me so excited about doing this podcast is it's awesome when you hear someone tell a story of, yeah, I, I literally had nothing. Cause a lot of people, especially like with social media, try to say they have nothing, right? Like, I don't know, they came from a million dollar or like a, or a billionaire family and they had nothing. And you're like, well, you might not had a billion dollars, you had a million dollars. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, you still came from something. So those... Yeah, I mean, the support, I mean, to be able to have both parents at home um, for my kids, I think it's a blessing because we didn't I didn't have that opportunity. Right. Mm-hmm. My, you know, my dad passed away about 15 years ago uh, from diabetes. So it, it was very heartbreaking. But I understood that it was time for him to go. Right. Yeah. It, it was just his time. And um, it's just one of those things. It just makes you understand how 
life is so fragile and how it just goes. It goes and that's it. You know, I've yeah. lost I lost a cousin uh, from COVID uh, early in the year and heartbreaking, 42 years old. So you have to appreciate life at the end of the day and appreciate the people around you mm-hmm. um, and, and just have to keep moving forward. Yeah. So. No, it's, so, I mean, dude, I just I can't help but keep going back to the nothing to to where you're at. But mm-hmm. where you're at now for people that don't know you um, started off as contracting and building. Mm-hmm. Um, now you're dabbling in real estate, you're dabbling in property management, um, anything else new on the horizon that, that you're looking at or wanting to look at? And So the future for, for me would be to just keep investing in real estate. I, I think at the end of the day, uh, we've done so many projects for you know a lot of people that have created a lot of passive income, right? We'll go back to that. So I want to be able to get there uh, at some point, you know, if it's 20 doors, 30 doors, 50 doors, 100 doors, right? Who knows? But that's my, my goal, um, you know, with contracting has been great. Um, but you can always take it to a certain level, right? Yeah. You know, so creating passive income, I think, will definitely help uh, looking at retirement and, and things like that in the future. Um, so I've been, again, lucky enough to be in a position where um, I'm able to invest and then connect with the right people as well. Yeah. I mean, we've had your whole your whole little crew on here yeah, yeah. Um, so it's cool that that all stemmed if I'm not mistaken and I'm just being selfish right now I think <laughs> that whole group exists because of hidden house no no I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, if yeah, I'm like no, thinking about it definitely I mean uh, with with the roost uh, and and connecting with hidden house La Palma yeah. kind of pulled up with the food truck it's all a, a great. I'm. I'm. I, I'll say it this way: How lucky am I to be friends with Alberto, with Dana, with George, with uh, Jason. I'd say Jason. Yeah. I mean, these are all guys that I can call and they got my back, man, a hundred percent. So, uh, very lucky to be in that position with uh, this group of guys, and uh, and we're just gonna keep moving forward, man, and and, and working hard. So. But how do you how do you get hooked up like that? You know, a lot of people want those relationships and we'll they go, don't they don't have them we'll go back all of those guys have been my clients yeah. every single guy has been my client so that's how we've been able to to move forward uh, except george george and i have worked together and mm-hmm. collaborations and things like that um but you just have to build those relationships and yeah. and and uh and just be there right yeah. you're almost like brothers right and at the end of the day i want the best for them i want to be able to also set them up for success if i see uh for example george working on something and if i can chime in and say hey maybe you know you can do it this way you know even though he's extremely good at his craft i'm gonna tell him you know communication and be honest and yeah. and he maybe he can take it and 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 kind of look at it his way as well why, why don't you think there's more people like that that want to see people in your life or or the relationships that you have that you, they don't want to see them succeed they almost want to see them fail to be like, oh, you know, you should have done it my way or or they don't want to give them their their secrets. You know, it's I'm not quite sure, but for me, it's always been a positive mindset. Everybody yeah. around me, I want them to be successful. I want them to understand life, uh, understand even marriage, for example. You want to understand all those the good points and the bad mm-hmm. points to be successful. So. For me, I've always been very uh, a person that gives a lot of opinion, a lot of recommendations, and um, with my success or failures. But um, I almost, you know, I, I'll use Alberto for example. With his business is thriving, but I always chime in and say, "Hey, what about this way or that way?" Yeah. Just as my opinion, I'm not in the burrito tortilla business, but I am in the business of understanding management and, and overall numbers. And we kind of, that's our connection, right? We go mm-hmm. back and forth and, and talk about certain things, but we have to keep pushing, right? And maximize value. I, I think that's the biggest thing for any business is understanding what you have and understanding how you can maximize the potential on every single thing that you yeah. own. We were literally just talking of. about that right yeah. before we started. Yeah. You know, like the like you were saying, giving like a recommendation. He like, what you were setting up, he was tell- we were talking about like one of the shops and he's like, you got to do this. I was like, I know, like I was literally just <laughs> thinking about that. Um, yeah. So it's those things though and those connections. And I'm going to answer that question also because I think a lot of it's ego. I think a lot of people are ego driven. Um, 
unfortunately, yeah. especially in like the business community. It doesn't matter what business you have. You could be yeah. in the business of making this this cable, right? Or the business of building things or the business of providing coffee, whatever it is. Business in general, I feel like a lot of people have, have an ego. And yeah. whether it's an ego to be better than the next person or it's an ego to prove people wrong that told them that they would fail, mm -hmm. whether it's an ego of, I came from nothing, so I'm not gonna be nothing. I, I don't I don't know what it is, but from all my past negative encounters, it's it's ego driven. And um, that sucks because I think that's huge though, because even like for me, I've I've been in those crappy situations where I've had nothing where I'm worried about how I'm gonna pay my rent or bills or buy food, like deciding, all right, am I gonna get gas or am I gonna give my kid lunch money? Like what do I do? And so I, I, if I could be that helping hand because I had so many people help me, not just financially, but people gave me some advice. Like I've had friends literally just call me when I've been in the, in the poop hole and they're just like, look, man, try, try doing this, yeah. this and this. They didn't give me money. They weren't sitting there like trying to pay my, my bills, but they said, try this. And I was like, oh man, that's a, that's a kick in the ass that I needed to kind of, to kind of go, you know? Yeah, we all need motivation, and uh, to have people like that uh, is very valuable, I, I feel. Um, but you have to understand that um, anything is possible, right? You just have to set yourself up and have an open mindset um, uh, with different opportunities. Um, and uh, and again, also relationships with, uh, with business, um, there's always going to be an open door, right, to, to, mm -hmm. to ask or... Or, or grow as well. So I've been one of those people that, you know, with every project that I've done, I, I've tried to, um, again, make it like if it was my own, mm -hmm. maximize value. Uh, we call it design build, basically. If there's changes to be made on the field, we'll try to do them within what we can in that moment because a lot of times with architecture or plans, uh, just because it's on there doesn't mean you have to follow every little step. You can change things right mm -hmm. and, and that's life you change things to mm -hmm. adapt and, and and try to accommodate uh, certain situations and and go back to uh you know being uh the, the best person that you can at the end of the day i just think it'd, it'd be hard to as you were talking about that i think it'd be hard to turn someone down if they're like hey like i, I admire what you've done I really respect what you, what you've done, and, and I just want. How'd you do it? Like, can you give me some yeah. advice? You know. Yeah, I, I love talking to younger, uh, you know, generations on on how things can get there. Mm -hmm. But the 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 response is they just want it too quickly. Yeah, <clears throat> they don't want to put in the work, or they they can't even set themselves like a two year goal to see mm -hmm. what they're going to be, you know, in two years. So it's a very hard position right now to make people understand what it takes to, to get there. Yeah, I've said it before on different episodes, but like, are, I am, I haven't said it this way, so this will be the first way, but I am scared for the younger generation because it's, it's like a, the, the art of working hard seems to be like more rare. And mm -hmm. that scares me for my kids growing up, right? I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure I teach and instill, hey, we gotta work hard, we have to be good people, you have to be a person of your word, and the rest will figure itself out, as long as you have those core values. But when you see like a lot of like the high school kids, or even younger, I'm like, oh my goodness, these are what my kids are gonna grow up with? That's terrifying. Yeah. And I'm, I'm around that, and it's crazy. Yeah, that's what I mean, you coach high school it's football. It's crazy to see, <clears throat> yeah. like we went to school 15 years ago to high school, and it was cool to be like, the big strong guy, but you needed to work your ass off to get there. You need to yeah. go lift, you need to go work every day and be disciplined. Like when your girlfriend or your friends wanted to go hang out, like, no, I, I have to go to the weight room. I have things I, I want to accomplish. I have, I have goals that I set out for myself and, and oh, I need to get prepared for that. And, and a lot of kids now don't have that. They, they say, oh, you know, I did, for instance, football. They, I did the field work. Yeah, but you didn't do the weight room work. You didn't do the film room work. You still need to turn in your homework to be eligible to even play. They don't have all those other facets of it. They just want, they just think because they ran some routes or because they did some drills on the field that, that they're okay, they're fine. And that, that's not true. It takes a lot yeah. more than that to be a successful athlete, let alone, you know, just football player. But I, I, it's, it is 
disheartening to see that. You know, I don't and, know where it I happened. Think, I don't know. I've no maybe when social media got big, I have no clue because you have to. What I try to do as a parent is if I notice something like, especially with my son, because I I was that kid that that had those aspirations and those goals. If I see him doing something wrong, I try to give him examples. Like if I know of something or if I went through something, I try to give him examples. Like hey, you know, I was the same way, and and it's funny because. He, him and his mom, his mom and I are high school sweethearts. And so I'd be like, no, mom would want to go hang out and go do something. And I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I got I got to go do this. I got practice yeah. or I got to go do this. And so if, if I see him talking to a girl or he wants to leave practice early, I'm like, no, man, you can't do it. <laughs> if I did it, if I said no to your mom, you can say no to this girl. That's so funny. But it's true. And I don't mean that in like a, every kid, obviously. I'm just saying like as a general. 90%. Like, culture right now yeah. it's we all want the not all we but the the culture and society wants the fast pace instant success instant gratification instant dollar i, instant. I want it too but i'm yeah, willing to work for it exactly you know, but I'm, i don't I'm expect it in my head to be instant yeah. it took me i'm on my 11th year of owning my business 11 yeah. years and i was just saying like since i've even met you i'm just now finding some breathing room and it's not even the breathing room i want but it's, it's just really better than it was before. And that's what people don't understand. Yeah. You know, 11 years and you're on what, 14, 15? About that, yeah. And, you know, again, everyone sees now, you know, but they didn't see what it took you to get there. Well, I'll give you guys another thing that um, because of the, the all the hard work and the fast pace and the commitments with work, um, this past summer was the first time that I actually took my family on vacation. Oh, I went wow. to Hawaii, first time. Mm out of all that span because I was just too committed and I'm lucky enough that this year I was able to take him on a 10 day vacation to Hawaii. Um, and I feel very fortunate to be able to be in that position. Yeah. Um, because I was just, it was too hard, not financial. It was just jobs, commitment, <clears throat> excuse me, leaving, you know, 20 plus guys by themselves on what they're going to do. And I, I've always just been too trying to be on top of everything. Mm -hmm. um, to to being able to step back was really nice for us. Yeah, yeah. see that that took years yes. and years. Yeah, that didn't happen a long overnight. time. A and long that's time. the thing that's like, <clears throat> I always am just so mind blown by when people ask about like business stuff. It's like, yes, there are companies that obviously open day one and just crush, right? But that's not that's not normal. That's not like the average business that that is able to do that and um you know like you've said at the end of the day it just takes hard work dedication and just being a good person and doing what you say but even those companies that at some point have some dips sometimes they, they have to oh yeah know, yeah go back oh, up yeah. or unless you're a freaking tech company that opens up and then sells for yeah billions <laughs> and then on to the next one but smart um, guys yeah no i definitely just enjoy hearing how people got to where they're at yeah, so um, for every time that we did want to take a vacation, I would buy a tool for the business mm. or a truck or a polishing concrete tool or whatever it may be to be able to keep feeding the family. And, mm -hmm. and uh, another big point for me is that a lot of my guys are like my family. You know, these guys also have kids, also have a wife, also have bills. So every move that I make uh, business-wise, I think about them as well. How can I set them up so that they're not at home, right? That they have business in front of them. And that's why I tell them that um, there's so much opportunity to grow, right? We don't know, we don't know everything, but if you put your mind to it, you know, I'll help you grow with me, right? Mm -hmm. and, and understand um, what it takes to, to uh, you know, keep working hard and uh, with uh, construction, I've always focused on quality, right? Attention to detail uh, goes a long ways as well. Oh yeah. I know I, I used to do pre-wiring and for for low voltage uh so like for phones and yep. internet and sometimes speakers and we it was uh what is the right terminology how you get paid it was piece uh, work, piece work. Yep. so as every house that i got that i finished that i would get paid and and i was i would say on the slower side even though i worked fast but i made sure all my wires were always tight yep. And, and I noticed this the first month, like everything was the way it's supposed to be. And then guy, I was finishing like five or six houses a day. There's guys doing like 10 to 12. And I was like, how are you guys doing this? Well, 
the week late a week later they would all get called back to go finish because the wires were loose or they were hanging or they weren't going to the right room they're they're trying to just get it done without doing quality work yeah so i think that goes a long way you know it's a, it's a little bit of a slower pace but you don't have to go back and go and do things and i think in business if you have that mentality like hey we're, we're gonna do it right the first time yeah. take your time we're do not it gonna right. mess yeah. up then then you know you have a, a happy customer like you said yeah and you know i've been fortunate enough that i still get calls five six years later for little things and i still pick up the phone and i go you know <laughs> fix things because uh, i want to have those doors open and those relationships yeah. Uh, yeah no it's so true you you help us out so much like even like all the baristas at at the santa Ana shop i I don't even think I started telling them to not like charge you. They just started doing it because of every time you would come in and they would ask him, Luis would like send someone over. Yeah. yeah. Like even it could be something so little and obviously we, everyone knows you got like a lot of jobs. So it might take like a day, but he sends someone. And so the baristas like on their own just started like no one charges Luis when he goes to the shop. <laughs> At least unless they're brand new and they've never met you yet. Yeah. But it's that thing where it's like they always see you. And even now like, Brock is like your little tiny brother where he's like messing with you now. And yeah. it's like yeah. those those relationships and those those true like connections that you build that will take you further, um, yeah. which is a big thing. Uh, it's super cool for me to be able to walk into Hidden House and, and know that we were a part of building it and everything else. It's super cool for you yeah. for sure. And a lot of other businesses in the downtown as well. Yeah, awesome. he, did a, he pretty much did a lot of all the downtown, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Like you, at one point, used to see LSR builder uh, banners like everywhere. <laughs> a lot of signs. A lot of signs. So yeah, again, we were in a position where uh, we started growing quite a bit um, and, and just doing a lot of projects within like a five mile radius, That's awesome. which is really hard to do with contracting, right? Um, but I was able to meet a lot of great people, a lot of good connections, and 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 put in the hard work. That, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, well my friend, um, I appreciate you for everything you do for us and for coming on and sharing your story. Yeah, I thank hope you guys. that we, we say it all the time and we told George this and we'll say it every single time probably, but the entire goal of us doing this podcast is that maybe one person gets inspired by your story, right? Whether they come from a, a single mo mom or dad um, and have nothing that they can see and hear what you've been able to accomplish and take one piece from it right whether it's remembering he just kept working and working and working yeah. or it's hey i have a sob story but i'm not going to let my sob story define who i'm going to be um the whole idea for the podcast is manny said it one day and we've been saying it ever since but being a resource for our listeners and a platform for our guests to be able to help or build or whatever it is. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you guys. You guys have been doing a great job and uh, and keep pushing forward. Keep working hard. Thank Mr. You. Manny? Well, if uh, people want to contact you or anything that you want to plug. Oh, yeah, like your website social, or anything website, like that. Anything yeah, like lsrbuilders.com. Okay. Um, if you guys need any construction services, for sure. Right. lsrbuilders.com. Awesome. Well, it was <laughs> a pleasure. Thank you so much for yeah, coming yeah, on. Yeah. And remember, guys, that everything was impossible until someone did it. So guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the fight within podcast. Find us on all audio platforms, including uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere you guys like to listen to it. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for continuing to, to listen to it and watch it. Uh, we can see the growth on our analytics and just want to thank you guys for supporting us. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Kingdom Nutrition. Make sure you guys go and visit their site over at kingdomnutrition.com and enter promo code MFW10 to get 10% off your next purchase. Kingdom Nutrition carries the best sports supplements on the market. They manufacture and curate their own line of supplements with the highest quality ingredients, including a lean protein, weight gainer protein, pre-workout, BCAAs, and an array of other products. They've recently created the world's first vegan chickpea protein, and it tastes amazing. I'm a big dude. I like food, and I like chocolate. So when they, when they told me it comes in chocolate and vanilla, I got really happy. But 
if you're your workout enthusiast and you want to change up your diet, change up your protein, go check out their vanilla chickpea protein. It mixes well with anything. It'll blend great with a smoothie. So to get your hands on any of these products, just make sure and go visit kingdomnutrition.com. Remember to enter promo code MFW10 and get 10% off your next purchase. Let's go.